Crystal, what are you taking a look at today? Well, Trump chronicler and self-professed book salesman Michael Wolf is out with a New York Times op-ed explaining why he is absolutely convinced that Donald Trump will, in fact, run again for president in 2024. So Wolf writes that, for Democrats who seem exiled to Mar-a-Lago, stripped of his key social media platforms, and facing determined prosecutors, his future may seem risable, if not pathetic. But this is Donald Trump, always ready to strike back harder than he has been struck, to blame anyone but himself, to silence any doubts with the sound of his own voice, to take what he believes is his, and most of all, to seize avail all available attention. Sound the alarm. Guys, I buy it. Trump has a clear and unchallenged grip on the Republican Party, as we've been talking about today. The nomination, it's his for the taking. What politician, when faced with such a clear path, ever walks away? And this, of course, is not just any politician. This is the narcissist to end all narcissist, Donald J. Trump himself. If he is alive and if he is in decent health, Donald Trump will likely run for president. And what's more, he will likely win. Not because Biden is doddering, although he is, or because Kamala is unserious, although she is, but because the conditions in this country are perfect for a Trump-like figure. And Biden appears to be unwilling to do what is necessary to change that reality. So take yourself out, if you can, for a moment, of the political specifics of these particular Democrats or these particular Republicans. Zoom out to the macro level. Pretend you are considering the political conditions in a foreign country and ask yourself this. What type of conditions create fertile ground for demagogues and would-be strongmen, conmen who poses populists but are in bed with elites? The answer is obvious. The worse things get, the more fertile the ground for those types of political figures. When sectarian conflicts dominate, when crime rises, when addiction abounds, when the gulf between the haves and the have-nots is an insurmountable chasm, do you think that this landscape leads to a reasoned and nuanced dialogue? to resounding confidence in established networks of political power? Of course it doesn't. It results in voters hurling the biggest FU that they can possibly find, and Trump is the biggest FU available. The sad truth is that Trump both made everything worse and also stands to benefit from everything being worse. It's an ideal situation for him and a sort of hell for everyone else. He oversaw a pandemic response that decimated the working class's finances, their medical health, their mental health, while also adding trillions to the wealth of the mega billionaire class and consolidating the power of political and financial monopolists. That response precisely the same, accelerated precisely the same trends that made Trump an appealing choice to some segment of the electorate in the first place. And by 2024, he might well be able to recapture that 2016 magic. So consider a few metrics here. We saw back in 2016 that the number of opioid deaths in a region correlated with the amount of Trump support. Well, guess what, folks? Addiction is worse than it has ever been. Overdose deaths skyrocketed in 2020 during the pandemic, claiming some 94,000 lives. That was a 30% year-over-year increase. Not good. We also saw in 2016 that places with severe economic distress and job loss were more likely to vote for Trump. Trump bested Hillary by spectacular margins, margins in the places most ravaged by offshoring or most fearful of coming job loss from automation. Of course, 2020 saw a horrific economic toll due to the pandemic and attendant lockdowns. But there are long-lasting effects that are likely to be more profound and ultimately much more dire. Monopolists like Amazon, they grew by leaps and bounds, turning in record-breaking profits and feasting off the carcasses of destroyed small businesses, plenty of which are never going to return. What Walmart did to downtowns, Amazon is now doing to the suburban mallscape at a pace that accelerated like, say, a dick-shaped rocket during the pandemic. The pandemic also pushed more companies toward automation another source of job loss and erosion of worker power. In a World Economic Survey of 300 companies, 43% said they were turning to automation in order to hire fewer humans. An IMF working paper found that this job automation in manufacturing, retail, and the service sector would put inequality, which is already at record levels, in overdrive. Yes, folks, this economic anxiety does fuel Trumpism. Finally, a nationwide crime surge plays right into Trump's law and order, I alone will fix it messaging that was so powerful back in 2016. In 2024, urban violence may well sub in for build that wall as the demagogue's issue of choice. 
It's hard to say exactly what is fueling this nationwide increase in violence. Surely, surely a year of lockdown misery did not help. Nor does record-breaking temperatures when research shows that the hotter the day, the more violence results. But we all know that Trump is going to blame Democrat-run cities and Black Lives Matter activists, and that the messaging is going to land with plenty of voters who are justifiably concerned about their own personal safety. Finally, just like in 2015, you got a media flat on its back, desperate for something to rescue it from its ratings collapse and cultural irrelevance. They may want to resist Trump's allure right now, but I promise you, they will be dying to hang on his every utterance feigning outrage at his every act in a symbiotic relationship that is great for Trump and is great for the punditry class and is terrible for America. Now, none of this is inevitable. It's not too late for Biden to write the ship, but it would take a dramatic turnabout of the sort that he has never shown an appetite for. It would take a truly FDR-like performance. Also, look, Trump himself is kind of a mess with a ton of baggage and an obsession with pretending he was robbed in 2020, but the underlying trends are very worrying. Matt Lewis actually has a good piece up at the Daily Beast that delves into the epidemic of loneliness in America and how much it fuels the Trump movement. He points out that in the 2016 GOP primary, Trump found a strongest support in places where people were socially atomized and lonely. In Trump, they found a community. They found an in-group that made them feel some sense of purpose and connection. He writes in that piece, Human beings, especially those who feel marginalized, they want to belong to something. And as our geographic communities atomize and religious service attendance dwindles, this emotional void is even more pronounced and ripe for exploitation. Folks, capitalism has bled our communities dry and attempts to measure meaning in profit and loss margins. That leaves us desperate and vulnerable, and we have never been a lonelier or more disconnected nation than we are right now. Conditions are ripe. As Michael Wolf said, sound the alarm. This really just hit me yesterday, Sagar, as I was thinking about all of these. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.